Anton LaVey, do you guys know who this is? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, the guy who started the Church of Satan. Listen to this quote. Television is the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. He even goes on to say the TV set or satanic family altar has grown more elaborate since the 1950s and from a tiny little fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What did he call the TV set? The satanic, satanic family, family altar. altar. I think wow. he even said that, you know, now homes have like a, like a, a steeple. It's the antenna on every <laughs> yeah. home. Yeah, he was saying it's like a church. Yeah. The TV set, listen to this, or satanic family altar has grown more elaborate since the early 50s from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. It took me years to decide to even purchase this book. Because, you know, I know it's got demonic spirits, demonic spells, whatever on there and all this. But the information is so valuable. Starting on page 84, I'll just show you in here so you can know that I'm not making things up and this type thing. Fascinating stuff in here, I'll just tell you. Uh, in a lot of ways, he, he had a lot of honesty. <laughs> And uh, which sounds strange coming from a Satanist because Satanists, you know, they're the father of lies. Satan is the father of lies. Um, you know, at last, the collected wisdom, humor, and dark observations by the founder of the Church of Satan. He also, he makes a comment in here about the, how churches are changing from the Satanic Bible. And I have just, man, maybe years ago in the late 80s, early 90s, I might have bought a copy of the Satanic Bible. We used to sell them sometimes at the Christian bookstore, but it was only by special order because we didn't want to keep those things in the shelf. Okay, so let's get into this without talking anymore. Um, okay, so people are wising up about the Swigerts and the Roberts and Bakers only because it's time for them to be allowed to wise up. Why? Because the Christ sellers were beginning to compete with the very God they were employing, TV. So notice it calls TV a God. So, in previous centuries, the church was the great controller, dictating morality, the stifling free expression, and posing as conservator of all great art and music. Today, we have television dictating fashions, thoughts, attitudes, objectives, as once did the church, using many of the same techniques, but doing it so palatably that no one notices. Instead of sins to keep people in line, we have fear of being judged unacceptable by our peers. You know, shaming, this has got some stuff to do with social media now too. By not wearing the right running shoes, not drinking the right kind of beer, wearing the wrong kind of deodorant, and fear of imposed insecurity concerning their own identities. Okay, and so it get, keeps going. TV is omnipresent, shadowing us more than the obsolete God-shadowed Joan of Arc. There are television sets in every home, every restaurant, every hotel room, every shopping mall. Now they're even small enough to carry in your pocket like electronic rosaries. Now he wrote this in like 91 or 92. Let's see if we can look this up. Uh, 92. All right. Um, it is unquestioned part of everyday life. And we can say that with social media today as well. Kneeling before the cathode ray God with our TV guide concordance in hand, <laughs> we maintain the illusion of choice by flipping channels, chapters, and verses. It doesn't matter what's flashing on the screen. All that's important is the TV stays on. And many of you can attest to that. You just want the thing on. You know, you, you don't care what it's on. You just want it on. And I remember David Wilkerson years ago used to say the act of sitting down in front of the TV was an act of kneeling in worship. And I was like, whoa. Well, the, the founder of the Church of Satan says this as well. Um, so let's just keep going here. We can use TV as a potent propaganda machine. He's talking about Satanists. The stage is set for the infusion of true Satanic philosophy and potent, emotionally inspiring music to accompany the inverted crosses and pentagrams. Instead of holding our rituals in chambers designed for a few dozen people, we're moving into auditoriums crowded with ecstatic Satanists thrusting their fists toward, forward in the sign of the horns. As much bad press as the 
the Church of Satan has received from the media over the past few years. Uh, mention of the Satanic Bible only points people in our direction. Perhaps that's the plan over after all. Now listen to this. This is amazing. The key is, is to use television and not be used by it. Munitions makers don't try the new stuff out on themselves. Now this is what Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, says. He says, if it takes turning your television to the wall or throwing it out the window, do it. We are adversaries to be reckoned with and must not be taken by our own infernal devices. So he's saying, you know, television is a uh, satanic device and Satanists have a work to do so they don't need to be ens ensnared by their own satanic device. Now in the next chapter, some evidence of a new satanic age, part two. Remember, this is from 1992. This is one of the phrases that really piqued my entrance. In the Satanic Bible, I provided some example of how modern Christianity was modifying itself to keep step with diabolical advances. Okay, now it's time to recognize yet another manifestation. Many of you have already read my writings identifying TV as the new God. There's a little thing I neglected to mention up until now. Television is the major mainstream infiltration of the new satanic religion. So, you know, I feel comfortable in 1955, the United Pentecostal Church, which I'm a part of, put in their Articles of Faith, ministers and church folks in the UPC shouldn't have televisions in their home. Well, I, the, I'm in 2020, this is January 1st, we're doing these videos. Thank you for Brother Mallory for coming over on 2020 to do the videos, um, January 1st. That I'm more comfortable than ever saying yes, apostolic people, Christian people should not have television sets in their home. Even in secular things, like I used to get this, what was it, the Weekly Standard magazine, and they had a whole magazine dedicated to all these, you know, University of Virginia professors, Ivy Leaguers, Harvard, all these people that don't have television and are the better for it. And also, like PBS, I mean, excuse me, NPR, not PBS, maybe PBS did do, but NPR used to have television turnoff week and go a week without television. People didn't think they could do it. And then when they got to the end, most everybody said, I'll never have a TV again. So I'm very comfortable. So because television is a major mainstream infiltration, new satanic religion, and people who study culture know that it is the biggest changer of culture ever. You had people with societies literally for thousands of years when television entered the society it was like a combine. This is one of the things when I used to do missions trips. Wherever Hollywood culture was it is a destructive force on culture. It, it just has its own thing and obviously it's not Christian at this point. Even though Hollywood used to be very Christian they used to donate uh, Los Angeles the city of angels not angels, angels used to, uh, if you would start a church there, they would give you the land free. That was just a little over 100 years ago. Hard to believe, I know. Um, the birth of TV was a magical foreshadowing, back to Anton. His daughter used to live in Henry County, Georgia, I was told, where we started a church many years ago. Uh, foreshadowing its satanic significance. The first commercial broadcast was L aired on Walpert Schneid, April 30th, 1939, at the New York World's Fair. Since then, TV's infiltration has been so gradual, so complete, that no one even noticed. People don't need to go to church anymore. They get their morality plays on television. What began modestly as rabbit ears on top of family TV sets are now satellite dishes and it says satellite sishes, so this is actually a grammatical error that I'm going to make note of. Sishes, dishes and antennas pridefully dominating the skyline, replacing crosses on top of churches. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions, a major religion for uh, the masses. 
a consumer society in which we now live is an extension of the society once governed by religion for many centuries. Instead of obeying the Holy Bible, right or wrong, TV advertising now instructs what to buy and what not to buy. And people say, oh, it doesn't affect me. It's funny, they'll pay $5 million or whatever for a 30-second TV ad at the Super Bowl knowing that it's going to affect you. Don't be so prideful. It does affect you. Um, now, thanks to satanic infiltration, it's safe to say, I don't believe in God. Atheism was, wasn't tolerated when scriptural dictates were in, fact, in fashion and accepted as the word. But modern heresy, not conforming to a television lifestyle, now you can just say a pop culture uh, lifestyle, not accepting television truth, is liable to be punished with as much righteous enthusiasm as ever. The clergy of the TV religion are those entertainers, newscasters in particular, who rightly spread the word from their cathode ray pulpit. The network newscasters are the high priest and high priestesses of Satanism, bending the minds of viewers to the requirements of consumer marketing. And it's so much 